of, of housekeeping. A little bit of housekeeping that we should look at. And how many of you already have a library card with San Diego Public Library? Excellent, excellent. Have all of you placed holds? Um, that's uh, the mechanism that we use to move items from one location to the other within the library. Um, so if you've done that, or if you've gone into any of our library branches and used the internet, um, you already, you're familiar with the fact that in addition to your library card number, you have a pin. Uh, the pin is something that the library user chooses, unless you've got an older card. I've got an old blue card with, with gold racing stripes on it. So on those cards and the cards that came before that, if you have one of the tan cards, um, you weren't given the option originally to choose your own pin and it would have been the last four digits of your phone number. Um, the housekeeping that I want to make sure that you're aware of with that. So if, if you do have that card and you're not familiar with your pin, don't recall what that might be. That blue card is the best one. I love that one, it's classic. If you don't have that number, you can visit any of our locations with your driver's license and they will reset that pin for you. And it can be, uh, it needs to be at least four, four digits long. Um, a lot of people, we do encourage them still to use the last four digits of their phone number. Um, back in the day, that used to be something that was semi-permanent, but now people change phone numbers so often, it might not be the best something to recommend. But along with having that pin, um, when you register your library card, that will allow you to uh, do a couple of things. It will allow you to reset your pin without the library as a middleman. Um, and also it will uh, resetting, or I should say not resetting, but registering your library card account. It will give you access to the account where you can choose uh, various I guess the, the best thing to call them would be uh, preferences for your library account so that when you're placing holds, for instance, you can do that with a one click situation because you're always picking them up at the same place. Or if you wanted to save a, a record of all of the items that you've checked out. So please consider registering your library card if you have not done that already. So that was the only housekeeping piece that I wanted. So now let's get right into the catalog. I'm going to share my screen. And we are going to look, um, we're going to go to the web and we're going to look at the catalog directly. And we're going to do a little bit of searching. Um, and I mentioned the whole idea of this presentation was for you to be able to, to use it from home. And part of that using it from home is, is planning your trip when you go in. We want to make sure that when you come in, that you are able to get to the things that you would like to pick up and also that you, here's the screen, and share and hopefully you may, you can see my screen now and it's showing just the Zoom information. We're, we're seeing your web browser. Awesome. All right, so you see my Google search there. Um, so when you visit our webpage, sandiegolibrary.org is a shortcut that um, we've co-opted, but um, the official website is sandiego.gov slash public hyphen library. It's a mouthful and it might be difficult for folks to remember. You can also search for it, but if you can simply remember sandiego.gov, which is the city of San Diego's webpage, Right in the middle of the page, there's a banner um, that you'll see right here, leisure, resident resources, doing business, library. Library shows up right in the middle. So if you can just get to San Diego.gov, that will get you right to our page um, by clicking this link. So as we scroll through here, here's the public libraries page. This is exactly what you'd see if you were visiting one of our locations as well. You've got the option of logging into your account you don't need to log into your account to search the, the catalog though. Um, there's a button here for the catalog. Contacting the library, power pack, library hours and locations and our event calendar. We're gonna focus in this first portion on the library catalog, just using that. I want you to be able to find what you want. And when you do find things that you like, I'm gonna give you a couple of tips that will help you to find more of what you want. 
and also navigating uh, navigating the record so that you'll know what to do when you come in for your visit, where to go. And especially if you're heading to the central library because there are nine floors for you to, well, seven floors that are accessible for you to, to travel and you'd wanna to get to the right place pretty quickly. So right from the, the jump page, right from the portal, at the bottom, there's a, a place for you to search the catalog as well. You can search the catalog by keyword, title, author, subject, tag, list, and by user. So in library school, they taught us that a good catalog or, or one of the basics for a catalog, I should say, would be being able to find your materials by searching uh, with the title of the item, the author's name, or by the subject matter. You'll have to have at least those three things in your library catalog. And as we go through the course of this, this morning, um, we'll see a few other catalog examples and they will all have at least uh, those three some things. Title is pretty straightforward, author is straightforward, but the one that often knocks people for a loop is the subject. Subject is, um, it seems pretty straightforward, but the subject matter that they're looking for is the Library of Congress subject headings. And most of us don't speak Library of Congress. Um, it's very different than, than what you might imagine. And one of the examples that we'll use um, in our first search actually, since this is the senior computer group, let's look for some things for seniors and computers. So I'm gonna do a Boolean search. If you've not heard the term Boolean search, that's when you use the terms and, or or not to adjoin your search terms. And it will give you a very specific type of search. So I'm gonna use seniors and computers. And hopefully that's going to search and find us a few things that have um, those two words in them. And we've got a few things to come up. Here in the upper right, you'll see that there are 55 results total, and it gives us a, a hit list that's here. So that was using our keyword searching. Keyword searching can be very, very valuable. It's not one of those three that I mentioned earlier, um, but it's very valuable if you have an idea of what it is that you're looking for. And again, using that Boolean search, we were able to narrow out quite a few things. We could have done just seniors, or we could have done a search for computers and then narrowed out those and filtered them. But this has been a little bit more efficient for us. When you do find an item that you're interested in, and I'm just gonna start right at the top, computers for, senior, computers for seniors for dummies is the title that's listed here. Um, it tells us this, that this one is by uh, Faith Wimpen. This is an on order item. So we don't have a copy of it in the collection just yet but you do have the option here to place a hold on this item. So you can, uh, as soon as you see an item in our catalog it's, and it's on order, even though it's not on the shelves anywhere in our collection yet, you can place a hold on it and you can get a hold of it soon. In placing a hold, again, I'll mention that that is the mechanism that we use to move materials from one location to the other. Or if that um, information is all checked out or not available. It puts you on a waiting list so that it can uh, be directed to you in turn. So when we look at the record that is here, I'm gonna click the title. And this one will probably have a slightly incomplete record, um, but I'd like you to take a look at it because there are some things here. On the right, it tells us that it's on order, that there are four of them on order. Again, it gives us the option of placing the item on hold. It shows the availability by location and beneath this, I'm gonna go ahead and click that. So it's telling us where these things are going to live when it comes time for them to get to uh, the library system. Central Library, Linda Vista, Rancho Bernardo and Skyline Hills are gonna have copies that live on their shelves. Um, if, None of those four is your branch. Again, you can place a hold and we'll direct it to you. It tells us that the book was, uh, a little bit of the details here, it tells us about the publications, John Wiley and Sons, Inc. 2021. 
And the full details is what I would like you to take a quick peek at. Here it gives us a little bit of identifying information and it takes us to an original record. Unfortunately, since this one is on order, this record is very incomplete. Um, I want you to be in the habit of looking at these records because this is the this is the one of the tools that will help you find more of what you're looking for. Um, oftentimes when I speak with um, library users, they say, are you still using the Dewey Decimal System? I remember using that when I was in school. And yes, um, many public libraries, including the San Diego Public Library, use the Dewey Decimal System. And that system is built upon categorizing information. And that brings us back to those subject headings. Um, so whenever you do find something in a category or in a subject heading that is interesting to you, the information that's around it, the materials that are around it when you go to the shelf should be fairly similar. So in the Dewey Decimal categoriz categorization uh, or classification, I should say, scheme, we also show those in the MARC record. And the MARC record is a machine assisted record, which we create for every item that we bring to the library or that we make accessible through the library so that we can uh, put them into these classifications. The MARC record is like, uh, I could liken it to a form that uh, you might go and fill out when you visit your doctor or dentist. The more information that you put into this form, the more complete you, you uh, the more completely com uh, you finish this form, the better it is for those people that are searching. Um, so that's the same case with our library records. This one with the item not here, it is incomplete. So we're gonna, we're gonna go back and we're gonna go to the very next record so I can show you a complete one and what to look for and also for those categorizations. We're gonna go back to our search results. Remember we had those 55 hits. And we're gonna to go to the second one because this is something that's actually here. And there are several iterations of this one. We see that there's a 2015 book. There's an ebook that was published in 2012. And there was another book that was published in 2010. I'm gonna click this title. And as we scroll down, we have some subject and genre information. This one has very little. It shows that um, we've got microcomputers and computers and older people. So those are the subject headings. I, I invite you to become familiar with subject headings and at least looking at them because that teaches you the language that librarians speak. When we come up with these, or you know, when we come up with these subject headings, um, they might not seem what you would want to, to use in your normal everyday speech but it's because these are controlled vocabularies. By controlling these vocabularies, we'll all search for the same things or very similar things by using the same words. And it makes it so much easier for us to search these things. So um, one of the no things that I'll, I'll have you notice here is it says computers and older people. And this is the seniors computer group. I could do a search for seniors um, and computers like we did on this one, we got those 55 items. But if I did that in a subject search, which we're gonna do next, so that we can see the, the power of this controlled vocabulary and how it makes such a difference, um, it'll, it'll come to light very, very easily. So I'm gonna go from a keyword search here. Um, and actually, before I leave this one, I just want to make sure, is everybody, everybody on board is how we got to these subject headings here in the, in the details area. So after we click the title, it brings us there. And there's a, a, botch for, uh, a link for details, I should say. And then as we scroll down, we have those subject and genre. Sometimes we have many, many, many of them. We might have eight, 10, 12 different subject headings. This one only has two. Uh, the big deal about these is that they are live links. You'll see that as I hover over them, that the finger pops up. So that means I'm going to go somewhere else. And um, one of the other things that I'm sure that you've learned in, in one of your um, other sessions is that when you see items on the web that are underlined, those are typically links that are going to take you somewhere else. And that's exactly what these are. So if I were to find or to, to want to look for anything else that was under the subject heading, microcomputers, by my clicking that, it's going to take me to all of the microcomputer uh, subject headings. 
So now we've got 197 results that are there. I'm gonna go back to the previous page and try computers and older people. So everything that has the subject heading, computers and older people. And I come up with 53 results as we see up here in this upper corner. So that's a really valuable tool for you, especially when you have found something that you like, something that you enjoy, something that you are searching for. Going to those subject headings is going to help you find more of that stuff. And that's a really important something for you to know about. That was all with the keyword search. Again, if you have a title, it's pretty straightforward. You just pop the title in there. We're gonna go back to subject searching now. So when I do a subject search, and just to use that example, seniors and computers, or actually I won't even put the computers in this time because we know it will get with that result. Let's just do seniors and in everyday vernacular, I would think I'd find things about older adults. Uh, but when I look at my results list here, so far I haven't seen anything that looks like an older adult. So what is going on here? I'm going to click this title and look at the record and see if we can figure out why this one came up in our, our search. And this again was a subject search. So with the subject search, we're gonna click here for full details. And that's where we're gonna see the subject headings of this item. And we see live change events. So again, if I wanted to see all of the, the items within the San Diego Public Library that deal with live change events that are fiction, I could click this subject heading and I'd see all of them. Teenage girls, still no seniors. Oh, there we are, high school seniors. So ah. it's that's what we've got. So our better term, um, and what we use with the Library of Congress is actually older adults. So I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do a subject search instead of using seniors. I'm gonna change that in these older adults and we'll see if we get a little bit better stuff so that we can find things related to what we every day call seniors. All right, so here, when I do that, in my subject search, I came up with 60 items. And there's really more than that. Um, but I'm gonna click one of those and we'll look at the subject headings again, because I really wanna burn this into your brains, this whole thing about older adults and, and, and well, not about older adults, but rather about subject headings that you can use them to, to be an iterative search for yourself so that you can find more of what it is that you're looking for. So this one specifically is exercise and older adults. So if I wanted to find more exercise for older adults, I can click this and it's gonna take me to all of them. I kind of, let's do our original search now, which was older, our seniors, I should say, and computers and instead we'll do older adults and computers. And I got nothing <laughs> because I should be using microcomputers there. But that's the thing that I, I want you to see how these things, just the choice of the word. So one of the things that you make sure that you're doing when you're using our catalog is please consider being a thesaurus as well. If when something doesn't come up, I want you to be able to think of other words that mean the same things and pop those into your searches. Don't give up, don't give up, don't give up. So that was the quick lesson that was there. I'm gonna go back one more time to one of the results list that actually has something in it. We're not gonna do the RBG workout, but the visitor will look at. Is this making sense to everyone? Is, uh, or is it, um, have I done overkill on the subject headings? I don't see any hands there, so I'm gonna Keep on going with it. Okay, I'm gonna click here for full details one more time and we get subject headings. Here's one that's quite extensive, older people in juvenile fiction, paper airplanes. But again, um, clicking on any of these things is gonna take us to that full category of stuff. 
And that was the important thing that I wanted you to see regarding the catalog and finding materials there. So the catalog is going to help you when you stop in um, and you're considering mostly items that are, are hard resources, the items that are physical things that you would actually check out, take home with you or, or use, but they're usually physical some things. The other thing that you will find uh, increasingly now are uh, web links, especially with our government documents. Any government document that was published, I'd say within the last 10 or 15 years is also available online on the web um, because they want accessibility to be key. They want the population to be able to find many of these government documents. So when you find those in our catalog, you'll often find an actual link um, to that government document so that you can get to it. But those again, uh, and also you'll find links to our some of our soft resources. We're gonna spend a lot of time talking about the soft resources though, because that's what I, um, that's really accessing these computer things or these library, some things from home. Any questions before we move on to becoming familiar with that e-library portal? Okay, everyone's good. So we're gonna move on to, to number two, and that's becoming familiar with that e-library portal. When you are on our main page at sandiegolibrary.org, I'm gonna go back to the library page just by clicking on the logo there, and it brings us back to the portal page. Along the top, you'll see that there are tabs for public library home, about the library, services, e-library, programs and events, the central library, library locations, kids and teens, and idea labs. The services tab is a very good tab to know about as well. Before we go to the e-library link, because um, one of the things that you will probably get um, in the next few months if, if you haven't recently renewed your card is an email that says that uh, it's time for you to renew your membership. That's gonna happen every single year. And you can do that remotely now. Um, and you can do that with um, a teleconference by going to this book a librarian appointment uh, uh, section, and then you can renew your, your item online. So you don't have to stop into our location like you did before. You will need to have your library card and account and your uh, ID available to do that. But getting back to the e-library, which is our portal, we're using our soft resources. These are the many, many, many things that you'll be able to access from home with your library card account. Some of them will also require you to have your PIN. Um, so that's why I mentioned that in the, the housekeeping section, how important it is to know that PIN. So please, if you haven't, uh, if you don't know what your PIN is, don't have access to it, visit one of our library locations or book an appointment um, under the services tab there and do a teleconference and reset your pen to something that will be um, easy for you to remember. And I will apologize right now because um, you know I, I know that so many of us, um, you guys being the tech group in particular, so many of us are, are suffering from username and, and password fatigue, but um, please do uh, consider keeping that pen available. And also when you do register your library card, you have the option of choosing a username there as well. And that username will work on our library app and on our library web page. Okay, so really now we'll get to the e-library. This is the portal for our soft resources. Um, that includes our eBooks and audiobooks, our digital magazines, online courses. There are lots of great things here, but the things that, um, because you guys are lifelong learners, there are, I think, 10 of them I really wanna make sure that you're aware of. One of them we just got yesterday, um, and I think it's an awesome one. Um, so we'll talk about those items. We'll do a quick little tour through these. This will just be a survey um, because there are so many resources that are here, but you'll notice that there are categories here, books and literature, business and careers, encyclopedias, education and language. This is, we're gonna focus a lot on these guys, 
um, health and medicine, history and genealogy, kids and teens homework help, LGBTQ, magazines and live, uh, magazines and newspapers, excuse me, movies and TV, science and do it yourself, Spanish, and there's an index. If we click on any of these, I mentioned that we're gonna spend a lot of time on uh, these that are listed here in education and language. It opens them up and it shows you an, an array of things that fit into the category um, or what we've categorized as education and language. Um, there are lots of them here at the very bottom. There's an index. So these are all of the soft resources that are available to you. The majority of them are available to you from home with your library card, sometimes again, requiring your pen. There's a small handful of them that you may only use at our library locations, but they're arranged alphabetically so that if you don't know where to start, you can just scroll through them. Um, there's a brief description for all of them. Um, for those few that require that you be on site, it does indicate that such as here where we have the government documents catalog, that one's only available at our library locations. Um, but all of these others that don't indicate that parenthetical uh, limitation, you'll be able to access from home with your library card and pen. All right, so learners, the first one that I want you to know about is under our books and literature section. And the, the one that I'm uh, going to do a quick blurb on is Novelist Plus. So again, um, this goes back to our physical resources. Novelist Plus is a great something to know about if you want to learn a little bit more about an author, or if you have one of those authors that has done many, 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 um, written many books, and you're trying to figure out which one to read next, you want to read them in order. Novelist is the place to look. Um, sometimes you're, you can get really lucky. You might be reading an author like Sue Grafton who writes the, um, the alphabet mystery series. So A is for alibi, B is for, I can't remember what it was. M was for murder, V was for vendetta. So you know where they're gonna fall. You know that A comes before B. Um, but in many situations, we're not so lucky. So figure you're gonna read Stephen King's items, for instance. Stephen King is quite prolific. And there's nothing in his material that's going to tell you that, you know, this is number one, two, three, or four of the items that he's written. And even more so, you look at someone like Patterson, who has all of these series. Um, there's the Red and White series. There's the New York series. There's a Beach series now. Um, if you have that series name, you can find out exactly what is in the series and the chronological order that they fall in. So I'm going to um, go ahead and use Stephen King. Do a search there. We have four items come up as far as the author is concerned. We get a little blurb about him, a little bit of biographical information. Um, we get a link here to his most popular book, which is 11-22-63, and his most popular series, which is The Dark Tower. When I click his name here, we're gonna see a little bit more. When we click here, we're gonna see a little bit more. There we are. Okay. So here we've got tabs again. The tabs list all of his books, audiobooks, various series, a little bit more about the author and some lists and articles. So this is great because the series that comes up by default is, uh, is a chronological list. So the newest ones are, are listed first. So Billy Summers is the most recent something that is included here. I can change this so that's by relevance author, but we're within the author one, um, the author tab. So we know that's gonna be the same. We could reverse this so that we could start with his oldest items first, his most popular ones. And we also have volume and narrator. <clears throat> but anyway, here it shows us all the good stuff. It shows us the most recent of the books. Again, if we were going to look at one of those that's part of a series, it will be listed in this group here. So here, the Gwendy novels, Wendy's button box. If we click this series button, it'll show us everything that's in the series. There we are. 
And right now there's only that one. So this is where you can hop in right at the beginning while it's new. Along the side here, it shows us read-alikes here on the right of the page. And here are some terms to help you find more items. So these are the, the this is similar to the subject headings that we had in the library catalog. Um, so I wanted you to take note of that because in all of these different catalogs, they have some type of classification system. And here they use genre, location, time period, writing style, subject. And these are all unique to this particular book the Gwendy book. So if, if the thing that you really like is horror and you want a compelling writing style, um, you want one that deals with homecomings and temptation and women's polit women politicians, I can get a very specific search for other things that are similar to this. So always, 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 when you find anything that you're interested in, please look for, for something that shows you those subject headings or gives you the option to, to search for more some things um, and it will bring you more. So that is novelist in a, in a nutshell. It's a great something as far as, like I said, finding where an, uh, an item falls within a series if you're wanting to read chronologically or if you have a title or an author that you like, finding read-alikes um, or if you can if you find that you've read a series by that author that you really like, you might find, can discover that there are other things that they've done. So it's a great discovery tool. I think that's the best way to, to describe it. The other some things that deal with um, books and literature would be cloud library. So if you are comfortable reading eBooks, um, cloud library is a great option for you. With Cloud Library, many of our popular books um, that are written by uh, very popular authors, the big publishing houses release them. That's where you're going to find um, our Cloud Library um, titles. I'm going to take you to that. So we're going to go back to the e-library and Cloud Library. So these things you'll find also when you do a search in our library catalog, um, you'll see some items that are listed as cloud library. In searching the cloud library, um, you'll default to this page, which is our featured page. You can browse, this is a really special page to help you. And it gives you several categories that you can look at. Um, these categorizations, you may customize when you log in. So mine, you'll notice here, fantasy is uh, highlighted, historical is highlighted. We move to the left, literary, mystery and detective, romance. So all of those are part of the defaults some, uh, that would come within my searches when it comes to fiction. When I go to nonfiction, I get another searching uh, group for browsing. There's, there are these default items that are biography, business, and economics. Those are on the screen here. So these are these items that are listed here. If you decide that when you're um, looking for eBooks that you'd like your browsing to, to look at different sub subjects, if you want cooking to be the subject that shows up on these default lines, after you signed in, you can choose cooking and it will highlight that one. And then every time you open up this page, the cooking books will be added to that list as well. Can I, um, if you, can I leap in here for a minute, uh, Alan? Because you're on a you're on a subject that that is near and dear to my heart. And as a matter of fact, I was going to ask you to get into ebooks. And the awesome. reason I'm jumping in here is because I think our members are kind of likely to have already. Uh, figured out how to use ebooks. Oh, There's great. a lot of different ways. You can read them on your computer, or if you have, uh, as I did, won a, uh, a Kindle Fire at a Seniors Computer Group uh, raffle a long time ago, you can download these ebooks onto your Kindle Fire after you figure out how to do that. 
Yes. And that gives you uh, a new way to, to, to read books from the library. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's an excellent point. And one of the things that goes along with that, so if you do have a Kindle, um, it makes it really easy to get these things onto your device so that you can make them portable. Um, because on all of our e-book uh, platforms, you can read directly on the web. Most of these are written in EPUB format so that you can read them on the web. Um, if you're wanting to go portable with them, if you don't wanna be tied to your computer, or if you are using a smartphone or a tablet and you don't want to eat up your data, you can download the app for the appropriate uh, platform. So there is a cloud library app um, and up here in the upper right, you'll see a button to download the app. It's available for Android and iOS. And I think there's a specific one for Kindle as well. Um, you can do that. And the other app that is available is one that's called Simply E. The great thing about Simply or Simple E, I should say, Simple E is great because it allows you to read books from both of our platforms. The other platform is called Enki. I mentioned that the items here in the cloud library, these are the big authors that you, you hear about um, and from the big publishing houses. The Inky platform that we're gonna look at in a moment also has, um, it's a very extensive catalog, but there are things that are not necessarily bestseller types of things. You'll find things from the University of California Press, which I think is awesome. You'll find some really academic types of things there. You'll find lots of self-help types of things there. You'll find a lot of older materials that have been digitized there as well. But we're gonna take a look at that but the apps are really great if you're wanting to make them portable. If you don't wanna to be tied to uh, the internet and your data, consider downloading the apps and then you can, can uh, take this item and read it wherever you are. I see a hand, Stan. Yes, um, I was more interested in the audio books. Um, I, I like to use those on my phone. Okay. Uh, and you might address that also, if you don't Absolutely. mind. Absolutely. So with Cloud Library, um, Cloud Library has e-books for reading as well as e-audio. And as we were scooting across the page along the top, we started at Featured. We got to the browsing section. Um, when you're logged in, my books will show you the things that you have checked out and also messages. But here, this little link for filters is a great one for folks like Stan. We're gonna click that. And here's the format. I can have um, my searches and the uh, default information show up for eBooks only by checking the box here or uh, activating the check, I should say, or audiobooks. So both of those are activated now and it's showing all titles. And also I have this option to choose items that are only available now, because just like physical books, on some of these, we have limitations. We might only have five or six of these in the collection, um, even though it's digital. And you think, well, why can't everyone read it at the same time? It's not something you have to pick up. We have to pay for all of those. Um, so we, we get so many of them. And hopefully it will be enough so that everybody that is wanting to use them can use them at the time that they're, they're uh, wanting to do so. But um, Stan mentioned these audiobooks. So I'm going to deselect ebooks. I'm going to leave the available now selected. But by selecting the audiobooks only here, I'm going to click somewhere else on the screen. And now it's refreshing. And the things that pop up now in our default page, all of these are e audio. And you'll notice here in the lower right corner this little headset. That's telling us that those are audio materials. And I left the available now um, selected. So I left the check, box, uh, the check there. So all of these things are available for me to check out and download right now. These are things that I can get without waiting. Um, again, these are those default that are showing up. So um, history, self-help, all these 
We can look into any of these. I'm gonna click this one that's called a sense of self. It tells us the author, the ISBN, when it was published, the format that it's in. So this one is an MP3. It tells us that it's eight hours, 58 minutes, 19 seconds long. It gives us a little bit more of a description of the book here. I'm gonna hit the continuation there. So it gives us a pretty good description of the item. Um, and also I, I love that they have the duration here because sometimes you know that you're going to be available for a certain amount of time. I've got two hours that I'm gonna be in the car because I'm driving up the coast. I'm gonna to go to Orange County and I wanna have something that's gonna fit just that amount of time. I don't wanna get out of the car and be wondering what happens next? What happens next? I wanna get done with it. Um, so this is a way to do that, checking that duration. Um, did that help, Stan? Yes, thank you very much. That was what I was looking for. Excellent. Excellent. Will? Yeah, while you're there, how long can you keep them? Uh, I guess the duration is how long you can keep them? Yes. The, well, the duration of uh, the duration that's listed on the item is how long that audio uh, material lasts. So reading uh, that book that we were just looking at, that one was roughly nine hours long. But the checkout period, the checkout period is usually 21 days. And on okay. these, you can turn some of them in early as well. All right. I'd like to go back to the ebook. Sure. Uh, I use a Kindle all the time. I'm slightly uh, visually impaired, so reading on a Kindle is a whole lot better than reading a regular book. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, length of time you can keep it, or how do they handle the that? Yes, so when you, when you download the items, um, something called DRM comes to play. That's digital resource management software. So you might have to also download, um, depending upon uh, the platform that you're using. So this one, if you download the cloud library app that's appropriate to your machine, it's included uh, in the app. But with Inky, um, the other e-platform that we have, you'll also have to download Adobe Editions, Adobe Digital Editions, I should say. And that's the DRM software. That's the thing that says, okay, when you've downloaded it, you're only gonna be able to keep it for this long. Um, yeah. And after that time period, it's not gonna, uh, you won't be able to use it. So um, depending upon the platform, some of them just return them for you. So you'll never have late material. Um, some of them just return it for you. Um, some of them that, uh, you'll download um, items to your app or to your machine, it will allow you to use it until that date and then it just won't work anymore after that. And for those that do that, every once in a while you want to purge the system so that you don't have all that stuff just sitting there that you can't use. So does this work on the Kindle platform? Yes, um, for Kindle, um, there is an app specific to Kindle um, for cloud library as a matter of fact. And okay. Can you request a uh, ebook on interlibrary uh, transfer like you can with regular books? You may not. But the awesome thing about Cloud Library, when you sign in uh, from the app portion, or not from the app, but from the, the web version from their portal versus searching for them in the library catalog, when I search for Cloud Library, when I search for the San Diego Public Library catalog and should happen to find something that is an e-audiobook or e-book that is in cloud library, it's only gonna show those that um, the library has purchased the use of. If I come to this interface here um, by going to the e-portal, when I do these searches, it's going to show me everything that is in cloud library. So if um, I think Anaheim is our Newport Beach um, any other library that uses cloud library, we have access to those items as well. So that's a great advantage in going to this portal when you're going to use uh, any of these eBooks, e-audio or eBooks, because it gives you a larger selection. Does great, thank you. Question? Great, thank you, Will. David. Yeah. 
unmute. There we are. I was just going to say uh, one of the things that I found useful is if I'm you know, traveling, like my, my wife took an airplane trip, we just put one of these uh, ebooks on her uh, phone. And, and the nice thing is, if you get it on the phone, you don't have to be connected to anything. Like when you're on an airplane, you can't get connections and things. So you just have it. And, and that worked out really very well. And the other thing I was going to ask was about the interlibrary loan stuff. Sometimes I'm looking for things that are more technical and I find them like in the UCSD library or San Diego State Library. And I know that you can do the interlibrary loan, and but that's a different process. Do you want to show us how to do that? Sure. So um, there are a couple of some things actually that will help with interlibrary lending. The first one that I want you to know about is one called Circuit. Um, and this is the one that I would prefer you use because this one is free. Um, I don't want anybody to, to pay for books. So if I go back to the library's catalog and um, there is an item that I often searched for. Um, I'm a language geek. Um, I studied Spanish as my major. And one of the, the items that I thought was fascinating was a, uh, an early text called Dialogo de la Lengua, Dialogue of the Languages. And it was written um, in the early times of literature for Spanish literature. And I thought, oh, I've got to read this. I've got to read this when I get out of school. I've got to read it. And I'd look for it and could never find it except for at the school's library or you know, at an academic library. So here I did my search for that title, the specific title, and I didn't get anything. Um, it said nothing was found for Dialogo de la Lengua. And it asked me if I want to try my search in the circuit. So in this case, I do. Circuit is going to allow me to search a library consortium, which includes the San Diego Public Library, the San Diego County Library, the University of California at San Diego, um, San Diego State, and I believe San Marcos may also be included, but I can, uh, I can check that in a bit. But now I see that there are some hits. There's the book. Let's see what happens. So Dialogo de la Lengua by Juan de Valdez. Did that in, uh, he was born in 1541. Um, and I've got four items here. All of them have a little checkbox so that I can request them. So um, you're gonna need your library card in this case because you're going to request this item uh, be sent to you from one of these other libraries. And if I click this first one, it'll give me a little bit more information. It says that one San Diego Circuit Library has the item. So I'm happy that at least one has it. And if I click this, it will tell me which one it is. So it says that uh, the San Diego State Library has it. It's on the fourth floor books area and it's available. I can only request an item that is available. So if this item, um, if I knew it lived at San Diego State, and for some reason it wasn't showing up and I'm, I'm figuring out, I'm trying to figure out why it doesn't come up. It's because someone else has checked it out. So it won't show. Um, for me to request it, I'll just click this request button and it will ask me for all of the pertinent information. So you have to have a valid library card and it'll ask you your address and things like that. Um, and then there's a separate little account that is set up. Um, so these other libraries afford us the, the courtesy of lending their books, they will determine what the lending period is. Um, and they will also, because we're borrowing someone else's information, they have a couple of requirements. If these items are kept late, unlike San Diego Public Library items that are kept uh, late, we don't have late fines anymore. But because we are sending, uh, these are someone else's stuff, they're late fees for these, and it's a dollar per day. Um, so it can be come very steep very quickly. And also if these items are lost, um, the replacement costs can be quite steep. Um, I think it used to be $100. I think it's $125 minimum now for those items. So it's one of those things, um, just be really careful. If someone else's stuff, take good care of it. Um, so that's um, the circuit. 
which is a great, great something. So please take advantage of this because it is free. It's part of your library membership, um, David. Um, I'll be, I, I see your hand. Um, so that's a great something. Um, do that. But if it's something that's not available at one of these circuit libraries, um, it's not available in this consortium at all, then you're going to do true interlibrary loan. And I just wanted to click the circuit page real quick so that we could see the places that are included. So uh, San Diego County Library, San Diego Public, San Diego State, UC San Diego, and University of San Diego um, also. So any of those libraries you can borrow, borrow from. You did notice that um, we were able to tell exactly where that um, one item was. It was on the fourth floor of the Love Library at, um, at San Diego State. So don't run over to the Love Library with your library card and say, I wanna check this out. Do it through this system. This is what makes it work. Um, and you'll pick it up at the library branch, the San Diego Public Library branch of your choice, and you'll return it to that location as well instead of you having to run out to the campus. Yes, David. Yeah, and just for people's information, when it when you do get it, it comes with a big yellow band that says it's a circuit one and it's got a date on it. So that, uh, and it, it does tell you that there's fines and everything if you don't get it back in time. But I think you can still renew it at least once. So that depends on the lender. So sometimes they'll let you do it a couple of times. Sometimes they'll say, absolutely not. You just get it this one time, you'll need to yeah. try it again. Yeah, I think it depends if there's anyone waiting for it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and that brings us to so this consortium is awesome. Um, if, if you're looking for those more technical some things and you don't find them in inky um, and digital format, you want to get a hold of that book, this is a great something. Um, and we've got such great research libraries uh, in the region. So it's, it's wonderful. If your item is not included in any of these, your next option is interlibrary loan. And at San Diego Public Library, you pay for interlibrary loan. Um, you pay $5 for the service. And if there is uh, a fee that the lending library wants to pass along um, for sending it outside for the postage and all of those things, they'll pass that along to you as well. But you can mitigate that. You can tell them about how much you're willing to, to spend on that. As far as finding this, it's listed under our services tab as well um, from the main page. So when you're at the services page, but please start at the, please start with circuit, start with circuit, start with circuit. Um, but if you go to services and when you scroll down here, a little bit different than did the last time I looked at it. Now oh, maybe it's here on the right. Well, I will have to send you, oh, there it is. It's right here under library card and account, circuit and interlibrary loan. Gives you a little bit of information about those uh, services and lets you know how to make a request. Um, when you don't find that item in circuit, you can go ahead and do a search in WorldCat and you don't have to do that from this portal. You can do that from anywhere. If you just go to worldcat.org WorldCat is awesome. Um, they're the people that power so many of our library catalogs. Um, but what WorldCat does it, is it will tell you um, where these items are available if they're cataloged into something and, they've, uh, and they're subscribers to the WorldCat service. You'll be able to see it there and then you'll say, okay, there are lots of places that have this. This might be a good place or this might be a good item to try to get for, through library, interlibrary loan. Sometimes you'll go to WorldCat and you'll see that there's only one or two places that has it. And if it's a very, very rare something, they're, they're not very likely to send it. So keep that in mind too, um, because you're gonna pay that $5 fee whether they honor your request or not. Um, so that's um, part two and the real thing that they're talking about with interlibrary loan. Pat? Okay, well, I have a couple of questions. One, one of them is pretty old and you may have kind of answered it, but um, pre-COVID, uh, when I would call the librarian about the searching, there was an old catalog and a new catalog, and I'm assuming now that they've kind of merged and there's only one catalog now, right? Well, there is a little bit of, a, 
there's there's a little bit of a hold back. Um, so almost always when when we make a change, we'll make the previous catalog available. A, a classic catalog is what they call the previous one. Um, are two previous from now. So you can still see some of that. So when you go into um, one of the catalog records, uh, I'm trying to think of an advantage in doing that. Was there a reason that you would wanna use the uh, one of the older catalogs? Well, I couldn't find what I was, I forgot what I was looking for. It's been a couple of years, but uh -huh. I couldn't find what I was looking for. So I, I, I called the library, I called the librarian and she referred me to the old one. So we found what I was looking for on the old one. Okay. So that's, but I forgotten what I was actually looking for at that point. Could have been, um, a, it, it actually, it could have been a DVD or something like that, because I do get the free movies and stuff like that. And actually, that was my second question. Mm -hmm. is, um, for the DVD, sometimes I would put myself on the list for a hold. Uh -huh. And I think there, there was finally a way around this. But then I would go on vacation for a month. In the meantime, mine would come up, and then they'd boot you off. So okay. was there... A, there used to be, I think there was a way at one point in time where you could, um, you know, put a hold on your hold till right. you get back. That is still the case. So when you go into your account, um, you have the option of, uh, oh, I'm, I've lost my word. Um, you have the option of placing your holds on hold, basically. Um, so if you're going on vacation or you're just not going to be available to, to collect the items for a while. You can suspend the hold um, for a, a given amount of time, and it will keep you in place. The people will go around you, and then when you open it up again, the next one that becomes available will uh, go to you. Okay, okay, so they still have that. Okay, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. And you mentioned um, the DVDs, and I, I didn't mention it when we were talking about the catalog. Um, uh, as a whole, when you look to the left of um, any catalog search that you're doing, it gives you lots of filtering information. So um, if you came up with this very extensive um, results list with hundreds and hundreds of items, um, you know, like Google, you know, it, it's not the quantity. You just want to get the thing that you want, right? I don't right. care that there are 3 million hits. I don't care that there are several thousand hits unless I'm trying to do something to, to sample all of those. If I'm looking for a specific something, I want to narrow it down. And when you're in our catalog, um, I'm going to bring uh, a search up. When you are in our catalog and you find an item, um, when you look to the very left of the, the screen, it gives you some options that you can do some, uh, you can do a little bit of filtering so that you can just get what you want. Oh, I should do one with a search result. So I'm just going to say travel here. Yeah, those are the ones I usually get too. So when you get over here on the left, just like we saw in cloud library, if I'm looking for something that's available now, um, I can choose something that's available anywhere now that's travel and I get 19,000 somethings. But if I'm, if I'm going to be walking down the street, going to the Benjamin branch, I just want to see what's there. I can click that. And these things should just be, these should be the travel things that are on the shelf at the Benjamin branch. Um, and actually that was a really key something that I should have mentioned earlier, because again, I want to make your visits efficient when you go to the library. When you go to that, you know, so this is the, these are the travel things that are available at the Benjamin location right now. And here we do see that there are some other formats here. So here are some of these website uh, things. Again, I mentioned if they're within the last 15 years or so, it's very likely that you'll see these government documents. But I'm looking for physical um, things. So I could say, I just want travel DVDs. So here I select DVD. Or if I wanted music, I could do that as well. Um, at, um, and here along the top, uh, moving too fast, here along the top, it shows us the uh, things that we've, the filters that we've chosen. So I've chosen the filter for Benjamin. I've chosen the filter for DVD. So now all I should see here are DVDs that deal with travel that are available right this very moment at the Benjamin branch. So I hope that's super, super helpful for you. 
And, it, and I don't have to stop with one location. I can choose multiple locations. Um, and if I wanted to just make sure that something was available somewhere, that's, what that, that's where that anywhere uh, comes into play. So that way, if you were to place a hold on it, you'd be right at the top of the list. Or if you just want to go somewhere and pick it up, that's how you'd be able to do that. Did that help? Yep, yep, it sure did. Thank you. Awesome. Hank. I had a problem. And I can't remember exactly what how the problem occurred, but I think you you might recognize this and uh, maybe be able to help some someone else if this happens to. I have a, a public a San Diego Public Library card, and I got it at the Kensington Library, which is close to where I live. But when I was looking to get to the San Diego Public Library catalog. I kept getting the San Diego County Library. What did I do wrong? <laughs> um, did you search for it in a in a search engine? Yes, I think I was searching for it in Google Chrome. Okay, so um, and I think I reason, put in San Diego Public Library, but I I know I got the County Library several times when I didn't want it. Mm -hmm. So. Um, a key to getting around that uh, was that, well, we got a couple some things on the, on the newest of the cards. So I've got that old blue card too, um, the little racing stripes. This one, well, actually, even from this one, the, web, the website is listed on the card. The newer cards have it as well. So anything newer than this blue one will have it. Um, but if you don't remember it is, I don't like going to Google for that search. Um, um, and I, I'll just, the very worst case scenario, go to San Diego.gov. And then right in the middle, you'll have the banner um, and a, a link for the library. Yeah. Um, if I'm in San Diego.gov, I can't get to the county library, right? That's right. Okay. Well, actually, you, you can, but um, you, you really have to work at it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, San Diego.gov, that's the answer. Yes. Thank you. And you're very welcome. Will. You're muted. Anyway. Can't hear you, Will. Unmute, Will. Uh, question about uh, getting a book uh, to your local library. You can just request to have it transferred there from any other library, I presume. That is correct. So yeah. that's that hold mechanism. So here on the screen here, that place hold button, that's, what, that's the mechanism that we would use to, to move an item. I'm gonna go ahead and click that um, so that you can see what happens after doing that. So it's gonna ask me for my barcode and pin. So I'm gonna put that in real quick. There we are. Okay, so it gives me the option to place a hold on the item. And here's the button for doing that. Here on the left. Okay, I see it. A little bit. This is where I'm going to pick the item up. Okay. This is my home branch, so mine defaults to this, but I can choose to have it pick up anywhere else. Okay. Um, for for people that are fully disabled, is there a mail system or a, a delivery system? So there is not. Uh, we don't have books by mail currently, but if uh, if you are or you know someone who is fully disabled and not, uh, just not able to get to one of our locations, the ICANN Center at our central library is uh, where we have a librarian to help our differently abled folks. Um, and we will get you set up to have home delivery. Um, we'll, we'll get material to you. Um, so um, ICANN Center is the place that you'd want to contact. And I can, um, if you'll send me a quick email, I'll try to find it before we finish up while we're. Um, no, I, I don't need it. I was just inquiring about it. Is there a fee for that service? No, absolutely not. Absolutely okay. not. That's great. And, and right, also, thank you. You're welcome. And the ICANN Center is also the go to uh, section, if uh, particular for people with uh, visual impairments. They're our liaison with the Library of Congress. Um, library for the, the 
for the blind. Um, and you know, back in the day, there were big machines that you would check out and you'd get talking books. It's streamlined. A lot of that is done on the web now, but there are still some of those machines as far as listening to them. But um, all of that is done through our ICANN Center at the Central Library. So if you mention to anyone at your local branch, um, anyone that needing that, um, they'll be able to direct them there. And you can always contact me because um, I'm your librarian too, okay? Uh, at the library, are there machines for reading books for the uh, visually impaired? So if, if you um, are to enroll in the program with the um, Center for the Blind, or not Center for the Blind, with the Library of Congress, and you need one of those machines, they can get one for you. Um, they stop. I wondered doing, if they had them at the library, though. They don't. They take up a lot of space because they used to be quite large. Um, yeah. So they used to keep one or two when I used to be in the ICANN Center. And now, since so much of it is done um, through the web, they have a system called BARD, B-A-R-D, and you download the things directly from BARD. So you don't need that machine anymore. Um, and, and if you don't have a vehicle to get you to it, that's the thing that would come from, um, so in Southern California, the liaison is the Braille Institute. Um, the Braille Institute would get one of those things to us and then we'd hold it and then we'd get it to the, the person that needs it. But yeah, typically there's not a machine on site. Um, at the ICANN Center, like I said, maybe one or two, um, but with it becoming so web-based, um, probably not. But if, if there is need for one, we'd get it. Right, thank you. You're very welcome. Eileen. Hi. Hi. What is, what is the difference between the city and the county library? Do you need separate cards? And what would be the advantage to have both? That's a great question. So um, the differences between the two are the operations. One is funded by the city of San Diego. The other one is funded by the county of San Diego. So it's like going to Macy's or Nordstrom's. They're two different some things that do the same stuff. The great thing um, about having such wide coverage, um, so you would need separate cards for the two. Or um, if you don't mind waiting a little bit, you can use circuit um, and get things with just the one card. But if you're looking at convenience, having both of those cards live and in person will be um, advantageous for you so that you can go to any of those county libraries and any of the city of San Diego libraries. The city of San Diego operates 36 libraries. Uh, all of them are within the city limits of San Diego. The county operates, I believe, 32 um, branches. Most of those are in, um, there are a few cities that, uh, that subscribe and make uh, the county their municipal system and a few in unincorporated areas. And I think there's one even that operates that's within the city of San Diego. That's their 4S ranch. 4S ranch branch is within the city of San Diego, but it's operated by the county of San Diego. Um, the advantage to having the two is that there's different stuff. You know, it's just like going to Macy's or going to Nordstrom. You know, if I know that I want, uh, Gosh, if I want Dr. Martin's boots, I think I'm better off by going to Nordstrom's than to Macy's. I don't think Macy's carries them. Um, so there's just a little bit difference in, in what might be there because the collection is built up by people. So but the basics is, is geography, isn't it? Yes and no. Um, there is a slightly different, there, there are different uh, methodologies as far as to, to to what's available to folks also. And also when it comes to these e-resources. So I, if you are, um, you guys, you guys are my top group. You're doing the tech stuff. Please, wherever you go within the state of California, when you visit another place, get a library card, get a library card at that place because if they participate in the, uh, and the free interlibrary loan program that creates the reimbursements for, for um, participating in an interlibrary loan, they offer anybody that lives within the state of California a free library card. Get their e-cards when you're there. 
And then, so I have a card for San Francisco Public Library, Los Angeles, um, because budgets and druthers, and when I say druthers, what you druther have, the druthers of the people that, that make the, the collection, the e-collections available, they differ. And the, the, so even locally here, you might see that the San Diego County Library subscribes to several e-resources that the San Diego Public Library, the city library does not. So you have access to all of those when you have those e-cards. So it's a great something to have both of those cards. Yeah, before you said it was a $5 charge for interlibrary, but now you're saying there's a free version? No, um, interlibrary loan is a different something. Interlibrary loan is the thing that you're oh. going to use to get materials from, uh, physical materials from another library. But if you have a, a, a library card, from another library jurisdiction. If it's convenient to you, you can go there and check those materials out and that it's free that way. But your e-resources, the e-resources that that other jurisdiction offers may very well differ from those that are offered by your local um, library jurisdiction. Oh, You'd be able to benefit from those as well. So um, the, the e-resources are what we're looking at here okay. if, if i'm saying go ahead and get one of those so you would just and log into I, that library put in that library card and get to their e-sources you know mm -hmm. oh, got it thank you well uh pat yeah that was kind of my question can we get these e-cards um over the you know the internet here or do we have to actually be there to get it so um usually you have to go you have to be at that place in person to get your card Oh, okay. um, during the pandemic, you saw lots of e-cards or during the height of the pan pandemic, I should say, because we're not out of it yet. But um, during the height of the pandemic, um, a lot of this changed because what they made available um, was available only to local residents. So you had to have some type of qualifier that said that you lived in the San Francisco uh, uh, region to, to get a card there. Um, to do it online during the pandemic. So after we come out of the pandemic, it may return to the, the old uh, system where you'd go and you'd get that thing in person um, and also being able to get e-cards uh, remotely, but they restricted it very, very much so during the height of the pandemic so that um, e-cards were only available to the, the residents of that jurisdiction. So are you saying that, you know, like I've got the Tierra Santa library across the street from me. Uh -huh. So, um, but, so I get my stuff through them and also the Sarah Mesa library and all that. But are you saying that I have to get a separate card for the e-card or I'm not automatically on an e-card thing? With no. Yours? So all of those things, all of these e-resources, the, the soft resources that I was mentioning through that e-library portal, all of those are part of your membership. You already have that. Oh. Um, if if you are wanting to see e-resources at another, oh, so um, at the county library, for instance, the, the county of San Diego library, then you'd need that separate card. Then you'd have access to all of their e-resources as well. Oh, I see. So but is that, that, is, is that a separate, is that like a separate card that I would have to have then? My regular card wouldn't work. For San Diego Public Library, you have um, a, a multitude of e-resources. You already have access to them. You don't need another card for them. Okay, all right. If we're gonna go to the county though and one is something from the county library, I would need the e-card or my regular card. If you are going to borrow from the San Diego County Library system, you will also need a card from the San Diego County Library if you're wanting to walk in and do that. If you're going to sit, uh, if, if you're only going to visit your Tierra Santa or Sarah Mesa branches to collect materials and you want something from the County of San Diego, you can use that circuit systems that I mentioned earlier. Right. And that is free. Um, it'll, it puts a middleman in there, um, but you're doing everything through the San Diego City Library. If you want to eliminate that middleman and just be able to walk in and, and use the materials at your, at your behest and at your leisure, um, that's when you're going to want to have the physical cards for each of them. 
Does that make sense? Uh, yes. One other question. Now, uh, you, you were mentioning the fees and all that kind of stuff. If you did the circuit thing, would the fees hold if you were to just to go and, you know, go down to the library, the county library and pick it up yourself? Would it be the same fees? With your it's different. County library? It would it would be whatever fee system that the county of library or the county of San Diego library has in effect at the time. So circuit those circuit rules only apply to circuit items um, that are checked out using the circuit. Oh, okay, all right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Saul. As helpful as this is for individuals, people's needs, I don't want to cut you short on time here, Alan. So if you have other major topics you wanna to cover, perhaps other people could hold their questions and email them to you after the meeting. That would be great because there are a few other some things that I want you to know about. Um, again, learners, we haven't gotten to Inky yet even. So Inky is that other platform, uh, the other platform that allows for using eBooks and those materials. And that's also where you're gonna get access to the UC Press that I mentioned earlier. And it looks like this. So this is Inky. Again, you'll access that um, through the library portal, through eLibrary, Inky. So you can search it just like you would search our other catalogs. And here we've got keyword, title, author, subject. Um, here there are a few quick tabs. Again, for you sophisticated readers that you are, the UC Press might be really interesting for you. Um, but always you can search by title, keyword, author, um, and the search box is here. Next, so that is our other ebook uh, source. And to use uh, this one, I mentioned uh, an app that's called Simple E or Simply E. If you download that Simply E app, um, there's a link from our page to get to that. That one will, will allow you to read books that are both from Cloud Library and from Inky. And Inky, Inky is great for more of the learning stuff versus the, um, the, the best sellers, okay? Um, the next something I want you to know about that's also in your e-resources is Rosetta Stone. Um, again, I'm a language geek and I love anything that has to do with learning about languages. So when you are at that main page, Rosetta Stone is in the education and learning section you'll have to scroll all the way to the bottom of that section to see that it's there. So Pat, again, all of these things that are here in the e-library, you've got these already with your library card. Um, the index shows all of the e-resources. So these are all of the sources that are available to you, available right now for you to use, except for that handful of them that you can only use at our San Diego Public Library locations. Rosetta Stone is um, when you're running through the airport trying to catch your flight, you often see uh, a big table and they're selling Rosetta Stone. And you're like, what the heck is that? It's a language learning program. And it's a very expensive language learning program. You'll pay about $800 if you do a subscription for that. Um, but um, through the library, you may use Rosetta Stone. It will ask you to create another username and password, I'm sorry. Um, but after you've done that, you'll be able to learn, uh, there are 30 different languages that are here. It'll give you the first uh, units of those uh, languages. Uh, it's gonna ask me for a bunch of stuff here, but let's see. If it will. So that's a great one, again, for you learners. Canopy is one of our newest resources. Um, did any of you participate in the uh, seniors tech uh, event that happened uh, Thursday and Friday. One of the first things that uh, they mentioned was streaming, um, video streaming. And Canopy is a video streaming uh, platform. We, it's new for us at San Diego Public Library, but I think the county library has it. I think Chula Vista had it already in Coronado. But what it allows you to do is to stream video. And 
uh, I think Canopy has the Criterion collection. So these are classic films. Um, it has lots of documentary film as well. Also, if you're interested again in education, the great courses are there, mm. great educational things. You can get three items to stream per month. And I believe that with the great courses, those, so I, uh, there's uh, great courses for Latin, for instance, um, that I have been messing with. With the great courses, you don't use one of your credits. Um, you can listen, so you, the, the whole idea is learning, learning, learning. So the great courses, listen to and or watch as many of those as you can. They're great. And you still have your, you know, your balance of three that you can refer to. Gale courses um, is if you've heard me talking about any of our resources before, it's one of my favorites. Again, for learners, every month there are about 360 different new courses that you can take advantage of. That's this one here, Gale Courses. And uh, the only downside with Gale Courses is that you have to start at a certain time. So if you're looking to learn a new software, you're looking to learn meditation, um, you just pop it into the box here and hit enter. You'll notice that along the left here, there are categories that are that are loosely put together. You can search those categories or you can just put a keyword here. But here it shows us that the next start date is November 17th. So that's in a couple of weeks. Um, these are six week classes. They're totally online, um, two class meetings per week. And you usually prep maybe an hour for each class session. Um, you can interact with the uh, instructor and other class members as much or as little as you wish. Right now you can set up for enrollment. If you know that you're gonna be busy for the six weeks that are following November 16th or 17th, don't worry, don't fret. December 15th, another set will begin. January 12th, another set. February 9th, it goes on and on. When you do find something that you're interested in, go ahead and click the title and you can make sure it's really something that you want. They make it really easy for you to figure it out. It gives you some detail about the courses. There's an actual syllabus that's here. The syllabus is great because it tells you week by week, session by session, what is going to happen in that lesson. So um, there might be five or six different some things that are very similar um, as far as the, the subject matter that you're, you're following. You can differentiate them by looking at their lesson by lesson planning to make sure that you get the exact class that you would like to have. Again, six weeks, it's part of your library membership already. So I didn't realize how I was really talking a lot. I'm so sorry. Um, Gale Courses. So this is great if you need a little bit of a push as well. If you need to have a schedule, um, you know that you're gonna have a class every two weeks um, and it kind of pushes you along. If you're a very, very independent learner, just yesterday, we got a new resource called LinkedIn Learning. I love these Gale Courses. But sometimes I get home and I just decide, hey, I want to learn about pivot tables on Excel. I don't want to wait until you know the middle of next, uh, the middle of the month to sign up for one of these classes. But do sign up for these classes because they're great. Um, instead of doing that, I can go to LinkedIn Learning, which is our brand new as of yesterday um, service that has come up, and it is. Right here, LinkedIn Learning, and you can learn stuff. So you've got YouTube, of course, to learn things, but LinkedIn Learning has all types of great little packets of information, especially when you're trying to learn um, new applications and software, learning new methods of, of uh, workplace, uh, workplace duties, um, lots of stuff in, in this LinkedIn platform and they're great. And the thing that's wonderful about them is you can start them right away. You don't have to wait, um, have to sign up with your library card and pen, but they're great. Those were the things that I really wanted to make sure that you knew about um, as far as our e-resources before I left you because they're great. But please, I want to encourage you to, to go to that e-portal, go to the e-library, click, click, click away, explore those things, 
If it doesn't make sense after, after you've clicked them, you're not gonna break anything by clicking, send me a note um, and I'll try to clear it up and, and explain them. And hopefully there'll be so many things that you can use there. Um, Would you re review how to get to this LinkedIn library or LinkedIn learning? Sure. So all of these things, all of these e-resources from our main page, if you start on our main page and here at the top, click e-library. Okay. So that's where all of these soft resources are located. Again, we've got these categories that we can use. And some of these, sometimes the categories don't mean a thing to you. You can go straight to the index. And if you know that you're looking for LinkedIn learning, they're arranged alphabetically. You can go to LinkedIn learning here, click and it will take us to it. Okay, thank you. Um, and the other place um, is in that education and language uh, group. Any other questions? Thank you so much for listening to me for so long. I didn't. I, I can talk about this forever. So if um, <laughs> you need more, you know where to turn. But um, please, if there are any questions, I do welcome your phone calls or emails. Um, and we can talk a little bit more about some of these specific somethings. But there's a ton of stuff here that you can access from your armchair. Once again, Alan, uh, where do you... where? Where are you during your day job? I am at the Valencia Park Malcolm X Branch Library. Um, that uh, location is in our southeast San Diego, uh, southeastern San Diego. Uh, we're near the 94 and 805 intersection. Good. That helps a lot. Alan, thank you very much for everything you've told us and uh, for making yourself available for all the things you haven't told us that somebody will say, damn, I wish I'd asked him that. You may hear from Saul. Absolutely. Saul has his hand up. Saul. I just wanted Alan to clarify something he covered, it seems like eons ago here today, um, is the book a librarian ch choice um, in terms, how does that, work? is that a telephone call that they call you back or what, what, what how does that work? So that um, teleconferencing is what they'll use. So. Hopefully you'll be on your smartphone and they'll be on something as well that they can, uh, but you have other options. You can do just a telephone call, chat, but for the book a librarian, um, what they're hoping um, is that you'll have something so that you can see them and they can see you. So, so that could be a computer also? Absolutely. Thank Absolutely. you. Stan? You're, you're muted, Stan. Uh, before we go, I just want to remind everybody, next week is the board meeting, and um, we'll try to get through it within uh, soon after an hour, and then we'll continue on with the uh, ANCS program or uh, general Q&A. Thanks, Dan. All right, everybody, unless there are last-minute questions that somebody has, absolutely has, needs to know, I want to you, thank uh, well, Alan. That was a great presentation. You have, uh, if you didn't see it in the chat, uh, uh, Alan's email address is a b u g g at san diego .gov. and his phone number is six one nine five two seven three four zero five. Yeah. Thank you again, Alan. Thank See you, you everyone. Next week, everybody. Um, Hank, could I just make one brief announcement? Sure. In case it helps. Uh, City of San Diego is holding a recycling event in Balboa Park or near it, just to the east side of it, at Park Boulevard and President's Way a week from today, from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. So if you have uh, old household batteries or things like that you want to get rid of, um, you, it's just a drive-through. They hold them periodically. Is this uh, so hazardous recycled stuff? Yeah, they, I mean, it's motor oil, oil filters, antifreeze, auto batteries, household batteries, and fluorescent and bulbs and tubes. Got it. No, no. paint.
no paint? Not on this one. Where do you get rid of paint? Miramar. You can go to the Miramar recycling area. They'll take it. Okay. I think actually most paint stores will take it, actually. Will. Okay. Thank you all. And, and, and tomorrow's, tomorrow's end of daylight saving. Don't forget. That's right. Oh, right. Yes. Yes. Okay. Bring forward, fall back. Yeah. Darn. <laughs>